take control of your finances. Gain insights from top industry professionals. Financial topics that matter to you from your go-to resource. This is Right on the Money with your host, Dennis Matter. Hello and welcome to Right on the Money, the show that features financial advisors, insurance professionals, and fiduciaries who discuss financial topics that empower you to take control of your finances. I'm your host, Dennis Matter, and we are so glad you've taken time out of your day to spend with us. Remember, you can watch full episodes on our YouTube channel or rightonthemoneyshow.com. Now, I'm pleased to be joined today by our friend Brent Ford, owner of Benefit Wealth Partners. Brent, great to have you here today. Hey, it's great to be back. It's a lot of fun last time. I was really excited that I get to come back again. We are so happy to have you here. And in fact, I've been keeping an eye on you since we saw you last. And uh, you've had a busy year. You have been popping up all over the place. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to mention a couple of these, and you're going to have to tell us about it. But you've been on Fox Business. You've been on Forbes. You've been on Kiplinger and uh, putting articles out. And then, did I hear this correct? You're working on a book as well? Working on a book, yeah. So, you know, it's always a dangerous thing, a, a person with an opinion, right? And <laughs> I've never had a problem having an opinion about anything. Uh, the, the beautiful part about where we're at right now as far as what the market's kind of created and, mm -hmm. you know, what the industry's kind of created, I think there's a lot of talking points. So I needed a little time to collect it, and I think everything kind of culminated in 2018 for me. Um, and then I just started writing, you know, kind of crazy. So it's a, you know, it, it is a good time to really be putting out uh, material for our for our clients because there's a lot, there's just so much noise. We have a different client experience now than what we had before. Mm -hmm. Even when I started, and I've been in the industry for about 10 years, um, on the early part of being in the industry, what we lacked was we lacked a lot of third party. I guess you could call it noise from everywhere else. Sure. Now we have clients that are, are much less uh, re reliant on the expertise of their advisor, but they want the expertise with their of their advisor along mm -hmm. with everything else that mm -hmm. exists. Mm -hmm. um, and it's a good thing and it's a really bad thing. It just depends on what side of the, the coin you happen to flip that yeah. day and, and what <laughs> space you're thinking about it in. But I think the way that we see and kind of view the industry now is it's not enough to just sit down with somebody mm -hmm. with a yellow sheet of paper and a nice office and then that becomes investable advice going forward. I think what we need to push for as advisors and as investors is we need to see the background, how the science kind of created the art well, yeah, sure. rather than just what the art was at the end of it. So that's been my mission kind of over the past year is to um, not just show, tell you what time it is but to show you how the watch sure. was built. I had read in the, one of the articles that you had on Forbes, uh, you had said in there that sometimes in this industry, the, the industry of helping people with their finances, we find ourselves as advisors falling into a comfortable paradigm. Our view of the world has been created by the events that happened to us early in our careers. Now, early in your career was 2008, which was an, a very rough time for everyone. Um, can that be a good thing or a bad thing? It depends on how you're viewing that world view. Mm -hmm. So how you're feeling about the world view, kind of what you're allowing that world view to accomplish for you. So if your world view, I, I use this a lot, I pick on, um, obviously I'm, I'm younger than a lot of people that mm -hmm. are in the industry now, um, but the people that grew up started in the industry in the 80s as an example, and I talk mm -hmm. about this a little bit in the article. It was very simple, uh, in my opinion, it was very simple. You just went out, you bought you know, a product, you sold somebody a product and the product kind of took care of itself, yeah. you know, for a bunch of years. And the market had some terrific years in the 90s and the early 2000s, mm -hmm. you know, and then mm -hmm. obviously lately. So you get a false sense of security that everything's kind of happening um, just intrinsically um, good, you know, maybe, for the client. Maybe even, maybe even overconfident. Overconfident, yeah, or lazy, you know, it could be lazy too. <laughs> um, so I think as we, if we kind of look at that as the staple, when we get into a time period when the market has a little bit more volatility, the stakes mm -hmm. are a little bit more significant, we have to be cognizant of the investment choices that we're making. Sometimes just placing product is no longer good enough. And that's kind of what I was trying to push forward in that article. Yeah. Um, paradigm's important. My paradigm is also skewed. And you know, I'm not really? immune to the industry, right? Mm -hmm. And I'm not immune to having a paradigm either. My, my paradigm was formed in 2008. I started in the industry in May. So mm -hmm. 
two months into the, the great recession that we yeah. had as an industry. So I have a little bit more skepticism about market rallies. I have a little bit more, um, I think I'm a little more careful as far as placing an overabundance of risk in somebody's portfolio. So those things can benefit mm -hmm. as well, but they could also be, be drawbacks. So again, I'm not saying that I'm better or worse than anyone different. I think I, I just have a realistic um, thought process of what it takes to be successful. That's why we use a lot of third party um, credibility building within our process mm -hmm. to show people that it's not just me, it's not my opinion, because I could be skewed, I could be wrong. Sure. So let's look at data, let's look at empirical research, let's, let's build this thing the way that it's supposed to be built. So in that same article, which is a fantastic article, but in that same article you mentioned that, you mentioned the other side of the coin. So there's the advisor side of the coin where we get our paradigm, but then for the investor, um, their investment decision, their paradigm is, is really based upon maybe previous generation people that they look up to. Is that, am I catching that right? Well, when we're unfamiliar with what is happening, the, the easiest thing to do is to look to the people that you know you respect and mm -hmm. you have trust in. A lot of times it starts to be your parents or grandparents. I know definitely for me that's been um, kind of a guiding point you know within my mm -hmm. life. So when we look at kind of this event you know the the overarching theme of what's kind of running the market right now I think interest rates peaked sometime around 1981 mm -hmm. and then they gradually started to fall. As interest rates fell bond prices went up because they move opposite of one another. It's a relatively simple but important concept. So what we saw from a lot of retirees that were in the 90s and in the early 2000s, very simple, you could just buy a bond portfolio and live off the rate of return. Yeah, absolutely. So you start to see this um, conservative flock of investors right now that are pushing for that same concept. This is what my dad did, this is what my mom did. They bought bonds, they lived off of the, the yield of the bond, and they were able to have a very successful retirement. That's what I wanna do. I don't want risk and I want the yield. The problem is, is interest rates don't do that anymore. So interest rates have now started to move the opposite way. They've started to trend up, mm -hmm. which has made it difficult in the bond market to get return and to get enough return to live off of unless you have sizable amounts of money. So you mm -hmm. see that just as a uh, shift in focus um, for both the investor and the advisor. Mm -hmm. If we have advisors that are only looking at bond funds because they have, they're scared of placing risk in their, their clients' portfolios, they're actually doing the opposite right now. They're placing more risk in client portfolios. And if we have investors that are scared of volatility in the market and going to bond funds, they're doing the exact opposite. They're adding volatility because we have kind of a, a proven track record of what happens to bond prices long term if interest rates go up. So that was the summation of that article. You can't make your investment decisions based off of the rear view mirror, what's happening behind you. That stuff's already happened, it's already mm. done. We have to start being forward thinking about our investment styles because that's going to give you time-tested returns rather than back-tested returns. That is a fantastic article. Now, we're going to do this. We're going to break right now, but coming up on Right on the Money, we're going to talk to Brent. Brent's going to talk to us about is return the right way to make decisions regarding your portfolio? And later, we're going to talk about investing with Brent. So you don't want to miss that. We'll see you on the other side of the break.